We are the four founders of Vifarion. We founded this company about four years ago, coming out of the Fraunhofer Research Society. Our goal is to enable the electrified economy with wireless charging systems and modern lithium batteries to increase automation and electrify the economy for our future. We are. We are. We are. We are. Vifarian. 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 Hi, everybody, and welcome to our digital event, Vifarian Behind the Scenes. I'm Matthew Ebert, key account manager at Vifarian since autumn 2018 and in charge of our international customers. I'm happy to take you into the world of Vifarian today and introduce you to our company, 
our colleagues, our product portfolio, and even to some of our customers. A few words about our agenda. For the next 45 minutes, we will take you behind the scenes of Weferion and give you an insight in our tech startup, including the new Etalink 12000 wireless charger. During this time, you can use the chat function to direct questions to us, which we will then discuss and answer in a Q&A session with our product manager and CEO towards the end of the program. But let's do not waste any more time and get started with the customer voice of one of our partners here in Germany, the robotic company KUKA. Many thanks to Dr. Bolton for this feedback. Let's go. My name is Wolfgang Bolton. As Director of R&D Mobile Robotics, I am for KUKA in Augsburg for the development of the mobile Roboter and HEVs. We were looking for a supplier for an inductive charging system for our new mobile Roboter and HEVs. The system had to be so compact that it could also be integrated in the limited space of our cars. And at the same time, it was so fast that the charging of the batteries could be fast fast realized. Mit Vifarion haben wir einen Entwicklungspartner gefunden, der uns induktive Schnellladesysteme für unsere aktuellen Produkte liefern kann und darüber hinaus auch schon an den zukünftigen, noch leistungsfähigeren Systemen entwickelt, wie wir sie für den Ausbau unseres Produktportfolios mittelfristig benötigen. Das induktive Ladesystem Etalink ist äh, wartungs- und verschleißfrei und kann dank der sehr, des sehr guten Wirkungsgrades zur Senkung der Energiekosten beitragen. Außerdem können unsere omnidirektional verfahrenen HEVs die Ladestationen orientierungsunabhängig anfahren, was die Flexibilität in der Anlagengestaltung erhöht. Now, we will introduce our wireless charging solution with a short presentation. One question which we keep asking us is, how is the factory of the future gonna look like? It's surely gonna be fully automated and highly efficient. Today, we can already observe a revolution in mobile robotics. Nearly every process or application in production and intralogistics, even ground handling in airports or agricultural applications, are being automized. And all of those processes have one thing in common. They're all going to be driven electrically and need to be powered somehow. At the same time, the Industry 4.0 transformation is in full swing. but. The requirements to the processes of tomorrow are extremely high. Full digitalization, maximum flexibility, and more and more productivity. In parallel, we observe these main trends for industrial trucks in recent years. An increasing share of automatization, the rollout of lithium batteries, and the now possible and necessary change to opportunity charging. But how can we meet all of those requirements with the charging and energy solutions available today? In Wiferion's vision, there are no longer any separate charging processes. The energy supply is intelligently and efficiently integrated into the logistic process. Let's put it this way. The refueling happens casually. And all that without the need of large infrastructure changes, highly efficient and fully automatic. In logistics and production, you should be able to focus on the value-adding processes. In fact, your customers buy your industrial trucks or HVs to work, not to hang out on charging stations. Our portfolio is built on three main pillars. First, our wireless charger family, with a 3 kilowatt and a 12 kilowatt charger, which we present to a large public for the first time today. The energy system is then built with our battery systems. Here, we carry LTO modules, lithium iron phosphate modules, and a pre-assembled tray version as a plug-and-play solution for industrial trucks. Our cloud solution, ETA Hub, as a data managing system, rounds up the portfolio. The integration of a new technology or new components in existing vehicle designs is often a challenge. We designed our product in such a way that this integration is as easy as possible. This concerns mechanical as well as electrical integration. The receptor coil can be installed more or less anywhere vertically at the outer side of the vehicles and horizontally on top or below of the vehicle. We are well aware that not every use case gives a good business case, but we are convinced that with a smart integration of opportunity charging in your process, there is a good chance to make your AGV fleet more efficient and therefore cost effective. What we see here is a typical logistic loop, consisting of a main track for the logistic process and a side track for the charging stations. This layout 
requires more space than necessary and typically a couple of spare HVs. With our energy solution, you are able to integrate the charging process fully into your logistic job. This increase in productivity and efficiency makes you more competitive in comparison to other HV vendors. For industrial trucks, we see similar potential in efficiency increase. Just imagine you have such an easy to use charging solution that your drivers start to use it at every small break. The result is displayed graphically. You get a much better distribution of your load over the day and are able to reduce your battery capacity significantly. To wrap up, I would like to give you a brief overview of some of the benefits of our solution. Our system is maintenance free and therefore does not generate any maintenance cost during its lifetime. With its high efficiency of over 93%, it is absolutely competitive with standard charging systems. Our solution is able to service 24 and 48 volt systems with the same charging stations. The technology meets all required standards and is absolutely safe. For example, the magnetic field is only activated when the vehicle is next or above it. This is one of the main differences to linear inductive systems. We could move on and discuss optimization potentials for the next hours or walk you through different use cases, but that would not match the scope of this presentation. Let's discuss your personal use case as soon as possible. I hope I was able to give you a good impression of our energy solution for HVs and industrial trucks. Further, you're invited to send us questions with the chat functions on the right side. We'll pick them up later in our Q&A round and discuss them. Let's move on and have a look at our Etalink charger in action. You see a video of our demonstration at the IFOI Awards testing days in Hannover earlier this year. Ich heiße Johannes Fottner und habe seit dem 1. Oktober 2016 die Leitung des Lehrstuhls Fördertechnik Materialfluss Logistik. Davor war ich 15 Jahre lang in unterschiedlichen Aufgaben in der Industrie, habe mich dort auch um mobile Robotik gekümmert und war 10 Jahre lang Geschäftsführer eines mittelständischen Maschinenbauunternehmens. Beim IFO Award bin ich einer der sogenannten Innovation Checker. Das heißt, wir sind als Innovation Checker nicht Teil der Jury, sondern wir haben die große Freude, dass wir uns die Produkte anschauen dürfen. Wir dürfen sie testen, wir dürfen sie bewerten und haben hier einen besonderen Augenmerk darauf, ob etwas sehr innovativ ist, ob etwas besondere Marktrelevanz oder einen besonderen Kundennutzen bietet. Was hat mich bei Etalink besonders überzeugt? Ich hatte die Freude, das Produkt eben im Rahmen des Innovation Checks in Hannover wirklich mal physisch sehen zu können, mich auch unterhalten können mit den ähm, Vifarian Technikern und mal ein bisschen zu gucken, was kann denn dieses System. Und das für mich eigentlich sehr Schöne an diesem System ist, dass man versucht hat, hier nicht etwa eine Speziallösung für mobile Robotik, die ja im Augenblick in aller Munde ist, zu finden, sondern ein mehr universelles System, was ganzheitlich für all die Teilnehmer, die moderne Fahrzeugflotten innerhalb von Unternehmen heute so haben, eine Lösung parat stellt. Da gehören neben den mobilen Robotern auch ganz herkömmliche FTS, aber auch Gabelstapler, Schlepper und andere Fahrzeuge dazu. Man kann also hier innerhalb einer 
Industrieumgebung mit dem Produkt Etalink eine recht schöne Energieversorgung integriert in den Prozess darstellen. Das hat mir besonders gut gefallen, gerade die Bodenständigkeit der Ausführung, der Gedankengang hier eben über viele unterschiedliche Arten von Fahrzeugen eine Lösung zu generieren. Das hat mich zumindest überzeugt. After this presentation of our wireless technology, its advantages and applications, I'm pleased to introduce our CEO Florian who will now present and demonstrate our actual product portfolio. Hello, my name is Florian Reiners. I'm co-founder and CEO of Wiferion. Today I would, I would like to introduce to you our product portfolio. We basically have uh, three groups of products. We have the Etherlink charging technology, which is really our core technology. We have the ETA store, modular lithium batteries for industrial applications. And the third part is the ETA hub, which is really the digital backbone of our energy management system. So let's have a deeper look into the different products of our product portfolio, starting with the ETA link wireless chargers. So the system basically consists of four components. We have the wall box, we have a transmitter coil, we have a receiver coil, and in the vehicle we have a, a small box of power electronics and this box is really the, the heart of the system as in the vehicle the system needs to be as compact as possible and also uh, it shouldn't cost obviously too much. So the second product category is our ETA store lithium battery systems. You see here two examples so what was really important for us to come up with a modular system so you are able to basically equip different types of vehicles with a standard component because um, this is really crucial to have standard components to keep the cost low and on the other hand uh, we decided to go for high quality cells so we choose um, high quality lithium iron phosphate cells and also a, a setup of LTO batteries um, because in the HEV applications we really have a, a tough set of requirements and we need to keep the system safe and reliable over a long period, often up to several years. So to demonstrate the system functionality, we have set up a dummy HEV with the typical system components. So in here you see a vertically mounted receiver coil, you see a module, EtherStore module, and you see the first generation of the EtherLink system. And basically now imagine the HEV is moving to a point to pick something up within the process. So what happens is as soon as it's positioned in front of the transmitter coil, charging starts immediately in under, under one second. This is indicated here uh, via the red light. And uh, also what is really important to mention is that while transferring the energy, also all the relevant data coming from the energy system is also transmitted to the wall box and then can be um, transferred further to our um, ETA hub digital energy management system.
Transforming the future together. Damian ist äh, Winling. Damian Winling. Ich bin technischer Leiter bei der Firma Nochkam und SMR. SMR für Sherpa Mobile Robot. Wir glauben sehr stark an induktives Aufladen von Batterien, weil äh, diese Systeme äh, erlauben schnelle und oftes oft Aufladen Entschuldigung, von Batterien. Auch die Position von dem Roboter auf der Ladestation benötigt eigentlich keine Präzision. Das kontaktfreie System äh, ist wartungsfrei und die dazugehörigen Batterien von Wifi-Ion, von Lithium-Eisen-Phosphat-Batterien, haben eine Lebensdauer von ca. 10.000 Aufladezyklen, wo wir davor mit den standarden Lithium-Batterien eigentlich nur bei 1000 Zyklen lagen. Das bringt Flexibilität mit sich und äh, man hat immer die benötigte Energie an Bord, die man braucht, um ein komplett autonomes System zu haben. So let's have a look at our EtherHub Cloud Energy Management. All relevant data like temperature of the batteries, charging current, state of charge of the battery, uh, voltage of the system. So you have a set of base data uh, in this platform which then can be used to provide further services. So this is basically a tool to collect data, look at the data and take value out of this data for the end customer. So I already showed you this uh, rectangular shape coil. So if you mount this on the floor, um, you actually have the possibility to approach it from, from uh, two different directions with your AGV. Also what is important to mention that you can use this coil for any type of battery technology. So you can use it for lead acid, for lithium batteries and also you could could use one coil for different battery voltages, 24 volt, 48 volt, and all with the same components on the stationary side. So in addition, we also have a long coil. So this is particularly suited for low profile HEVs where you want to uh, mount it to the side of the vehicles. Um, also, of course, you can mount this to the floor as well. So if you want to mount the transmitter coil on the floor and you don't want to dig into your concrete, uh, we can provide what we call power tiles. So it's basically um, a modular system where the coil is integrated and you can just put it on the ground wherever you need it. Uh, and if you want to change position, you can just take it and move it to another place whenever needed. So what I want to show you here is our ETA tray retrofit system for industrial trucks. So uh, to apply the system, you do have to do one final battery exchange. So basically you take your old lead acid battery, you replace it with this tray. You just plug in the plug. Um, you can also, if you have um, connected battery management system, and then you basically have your in process industrial truck charging system. Um, the main benefit is really same as for the HEVs, you can use your time in the process for charging. You don't have to replace any battery in future. Uh, you can just charge during your regular working cycles. So let me show you how simple this actually is. You just take the vehicle, you drive to the charging spot, you park at the right position. You see charging is starting immediately. In this case, we are charging a 24 volt battery and we are charging with a current of 20 amps. So it's quite simple to install. Even I can do it. This is the third time I drove this vehicle today. And um, yeah, I want to say thank you. Um, I hope you learned something about uh, our product portfolio. 
And if you have an application in mind, um, I would really welcome that you contact me and we can discuss your use case. Ja, mein Name ist Sven Hinde. Ich bin geschäftsführender Gesellschafter unseres Familienunternehmens, das im vergangenen Jahr 120 Jahre alt geworden ist. Also mein Urgroßvater Albert Lindig hat 1899 eine Hufschmiede gegründet und auf der basiert das alles. Hier habe ich auch in unserer Firmenchronik mal ein Bild von ihm. Also der Herr hier mit dem Hammer in der Hand, das ist mein Urgroßvater Albert Lindig. Und ja, hier unten sieht man dann unser heutiges Gebäude wo also in mittlerweile sechs Standorten über 350 Kollegen bei uns beschäftigt sind. Ja, durch den Hinweis eines Kollegen, der sich also mit innovativen Dingen in der Vorausentwicklung beschäftigt hat und da halt ja schon frühzeitig auf dieses Startup mich hingewiesen hat und wir dann halt auch in Gespräche gekommen sind. Es war also schon vor einigen Jahren und seitdem ja mit auch ersten Tests, die dann bei uns durchgeführt wurden, erst in Haus und dann später auch bei Kunden kam die ganze Sache so ins Laufen. Ja, also ähm, dort war sicherlich ähm, schon mal der Idealfall, dass das Ganze äh, so als In-Process-Charging auch genutzt werden konnte. Also äh, während des Arbeitsprozesses äh, beim Routenzug sowieso äh, Haltestops äh, mit ähm, ja, auf der Route liegen. Und äh, da ist ja im Normalfall so, dass da kein Fahrer Lust hat, irgendwie für ja, einen kurzen Stop dann mal ein Kabel äh, einzustecken. Und äh, da kommt äh, in meinen Augen natürlich so ein System äh, voll zum Tragen, mit bestenfalls noch dem Effekt, dass man halt nicht so eine große Batterie braucht, äh, wie man sie bei einer Maximalauslegung dann eigentlich bräuchte, sondern äh, dann halt auch mit einer kleineren Batterie äh, zurechtkommt. Und äh, was mich besonders gefreut hat, äh, war auch die hohe Nutzerakzeptanz, äh, denn äh, sicherlich ähm, ja, kann es da auch Bedenken geben. Äh, wir konnten aber über alle Themen aufklären äh, und es ist äh, wirklich also bis hin zu Belegen äh, mit Herzschrittmacher äh, zu einer hohen Akzeptanz gekommen und äh, das fand ich super gleich beim ersten Anlauf. Hello and welcome to Freiburg. Welcome to Vifarian. My name is Julian and I'm going to show you Vifarian today behind the scenes. So let's go. Here we are at the Vifarian offices. Let's have a look behind the scenes. We are Vifarian. More than 40 employees from 15 different countries coming from four continents working at Wifaria. This is where it all starts. Customer service and reception area. Everyone contacting us will be taken care of here. Let's see. Oh yes, someone. This is our technical service and the application support. Hello, engineers. As you can see, also we have taken measures due to the corona crisis and most of our employees are working from home, so you will see many empty seats. Nevertheless, we are there for you. Here's the management, hello, human resource, head of sales and key account, marketing and our outgoing storage. All products are being checked one more time for assurance of quality before they are shipped to our customers or maybe in the future to you. Very important, the Vifarian no sound box. Here everyone can chill out five minutes if they need to relax for craziness or just have an undisturbed call. And now we will check out the technicians. Here's our project unit where we develop solutions for our customers. Oh, sorry, this one is still strictly confidential, so let's move on. Vifarian started some years ago as Blue Inductive and the first awards, nominees and prizes which helps to grow as a startup were under the old name. Nowadays everything is under the Vifarian brand and the E4 nominee is one of the favorites from this year. Best in Interlogistics. Here are the first steps of our company. The Cyber One Award 2017. 
and the blue pad, the first product of Viferia. Let's go! Here is the technical heart of all our products, the research and development team. Here are the embedded software, systems and algorithms being developed here. Some lone wolf is working here. Hello Ben Raya. Product management, also at home. Hardware development, hello. This is uh, software development. Good afternoon. And of course, our testing lab. All products are developed, designed and totally tested. But unfortunately, <laughs> I cannot give you more than to speak. That is our key to success. One more thing I want to show you. Our testing show. Let's have a walk. What a beautiful day. Spring is here. Please follow me. Welcome to the testing show. Here we are checking, testing and optimize our systems together with e-vehicles from our customers. And today we thought about something special just for you and we set up this TV studio, the Vifarian Studio. In order to produce clips and videos for you that despite the Corona crisis you still can get to know us and our products. I hope you enjoyed the little insights. This was the Vifarian behind the scenes tour. Hope you can soon visit us personally again and I wish you now a lot of fun with the rest of the event behind the scenes by Farian and the Etherlink 12000 world premiere. Hallo, mein Name ist Johannes Tritschler, ich bin einer der vier Mitgründer von Viferion und freue mich heute ganz besonders, euch unser neues Produkt Etherlink 12000 vorstellen zu dürfen. Wir haben jetzt über zwei Jahre Entwicklungsarbeit in das neue Produkt hineingesteckt. Ich persönlich bin, wie gesagt, einer der Mitgründer, habe davor zweieinhalb Jahre bei Fraunhofer ISA hier in Freiburg gearbeitet, auch damals schon induktive Ladesysteme entwickelt habe anschließend zum Thema promoviert und dann hier ähm, die Gründung mit vorangetrieben und ähm, bin heute Entwicklungsleiter bei Viferian. Genau, ähm, das Produkt ist von der Technologie her ähm, ähnlich wie unser bereits auf dem Markt erhältliches Etherlink 3000 System. Wir sehen hier die stationäre Wallbox. Die stationäre Wallbox wird direkt an ein dreiphasiges Stromnetz angeschlossen. Sie hat zur Aufgabe, einen hochfrequenten Strom zu erzeugen. Der hochfrequente Strom wiederum erzeugt ein hochfrequentes Magnetfeld in der stationären Sendespule. Und durch das Magnetfeld kann die Energie jetzt berührungslos in die mobile Empfangsspule übertragen werden. Die Fahrzeugkomponenten bestehen aus der mobilen Empfangsspule sowie der mobilen Elektronik, die wiederum als Gleichrichter dient, um einen DC-Gleichstrom für die Batterieladung bereitzustellen. Genau die spannende Frage bei induktiven Ladesystemen ist natürlich immer die Versatztoleranz, sowohl in vertikaler als auch in horizontaler Richtung, sprich die Fahrtrichtung des Fahrzeugs. Unser System hat eine extrem hohe Versatztoleranz. Wir können vertikale Luftspalte von 5 bis 50 mm und horizontal sind wir in der Lage, bis zu maximal 70 mm in Fahrtrichtung Versatz zu erlauben und bei all diesen Abständen kann die volle Leistung von 12.000 Watt übertragen werden. Das entspricht äh, ungefähr 12.000 Zahnbürsten, wie sie vielleicht der eine oder andere zu Hause im Bad stehen hat, die ebenfalls induktiv geladen werden. Thank you very much, Johannes, for that. That was the new Etherlink 1200 wireless charging system. And here is a rapid overview of the most important specs. The system has a 400 volt grid connection and a DC output voltage range of 15 to 120 volts. The device can continuously transmit 12 kilowatt at a maximum current of up to 400 amps. The components come with the following IP protection classes. Wallbox IP20, call system IP65, mobile electronics IP54. 
This makes the system ideally suited to operate outdoors and in rough environments. With a Canon face on the mobile and staging unit, the system offers full real-time connectivity. Next, I would like to introduce you to a project in the field of industrial trucks, specifically a target train with the Still Tugger LTX50. Our Bavarian partner, the company LR Intralogistic, has upgraded the Tugger train in a very smart way and given it more freedom and enabling a much more productive use. Let's have a look. Hello, my name is Lauj Baksorensen. Hello, my I'm name is Lauj Baksorensen. I'm one of the co-founders of Nordic Alpha Partners. Of Nordic, Nordic Alpha, Alpha Partners is Nordic Alpha Partners is a growth fund with 130 million euros on administration. And we are backed, backed by several large institutions, including ATP, who has another 130 billion euros on administration. We invest in hard tech companies in Central Europe and Northern Europe. We invest in hard tech companies in Central Europe and Northern Europe. On the company side, you know, we invest in the Swiss product transformation. We invest in the Swiss product transformation. In the hard tech companies um, that I invest in, the hard tech companies that I invest in, and by fearing investment for us, it's just the ultimate, ultimate validator of what does that look like. Because technology, we um, believe, is one of the true enablers is of the electrified economy. The true enablers there are only of the electrified economy that we're not already today all that we're not already today all driving is because of the energy trend. My name is Kai Franke. I am the Abteilung of the Hardware Development by Magazino. We are developing at this time a robot named Soto für die Logistik in den Industrieprozessen. Soto ist ein mobiler Manipulator-Roboter, der Kleinhaltungsträger von A nach B transportiert. Also von einer Stelle aufnehmen kann und auf einer anderen Stelle abgeben kann. Ja, wir benutzen die Wifirian lösung weil ein Roboter an sich ein unglaublich komplexes System ist und wir uns nicht mit äh, allen Problemstellungen äh, herumschlagen können. Ähm, wir waren deswegen auf der Suche nach einem Systemintegrator der, oder einem Systemanbieter, der sowohl die Batterien als auch die Batteriemanagementsystem als auch die Ladegeräte für uns äh, löst äh, und äh, wir eine, diese Sachen einfach in unseren Roboter integrieren können. Äh, weitere Punkte, warum wir uns für Wifiri entschieden haben, waren, dass sie unglaublich kompakt waren für die Leistungsfähigkeit und dass sie auch schon mit der neuen IEC 62619 Norm ähm, übereinstimmen und damit im Industrieumfeld sehr einfach einsetzbar sind. As we all know, we have a big uh, global challenge as humanity and that's uh, to fight climate change. And furthermore, our current economy is based on scarce fossil resources, which are ending at some point. So therefore we believe that it's crucial um, to switch to a renewable electrified energy system enabled to uh, uh, conserve our economic welfare as well as uh, conserving the environment. And that's basically why we founded Wifarion. Our vision is basically to define a global standard for efficient, reliable wireless charging of electric vehicles, uh, mobile robots as well as electric cars and therefore uh, help to enable the electrified economy. So let's enable the electrified economy together. Hello everybody out there. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you had a great time watching our first webinar. 
I hope uh, the product presentation was interesting. I hope you learned a lot and uh, we stimulated basically your ideas. Um, today I'm here with uh, our CEO, Florian Reinas, and Andreas, our product manager, and uh, we'll answer your questions in a small Q&A round. And I'd like those two guys, of course, to present themselves to the larger public. So Florian, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Hello, everyone. So my name again is Florian, uh, Florian Reiners. Um, I'm one of the four founders of Viferian and I'm the managing director. So hey, uh, nice to talk to you. I'm Andreas and um, I'm here the product manager. Yeah, so my role is basically getting the news and the input from the market side, listening to the sales team, bringing it into the product and making sure that we keep our focus. Um, to deliver the best product possible. So, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Um, one little note before we start with the Q&A questions. I have to apologize for the quality of one of the videos of our um, investor, Lauritz. Um, we simply don't know what went wrong with that video. Please apologize the the, the mistake. So let's start with the first question, which uh, Evie sent us. Um, what is the IP rating of our components? I guess that's a Pretty standard question to our product manager. Okay, okay, that's a great question. Um, actually, we, as Florian showed early on, we, we the system consists of four main components, and uh, so we have a stationary electronic, uh, which is mounted uh, to the power grid and installed in some cabinet. So for this component, we have a IP class, which is IP20, and then on the vehicle side, we have an electronic component as well, which is IP54. So those two components will be integrated on one side on the vehicle and also on the stationary side somewhere. So we didn't put too much effort into bringing up this IP rating. So what we did is um, the transmission spot, so basically the two coils, we um, came up with a design that allows us to have IP65 rating. And this um, is supposed to give us a real advantage towards charging contact solution or cable solution. And this is the big enabler for us to be um, in, available as a charging solution in all the areas of application. So thanks. Thank you so much, Andreas. The next question we got is from Ahmed. Um, can your system work on any Leon battery or, need your, or do we need your batteries? Florian. Okay, uh, so for us, starting with the development, it was really um, important to start with an univers uh, universal approach. So we wanted right from the beginning to be able to uh, provide power to each and every uh, battery technology out there. So we can provide uh, this pure system, um, attach it to a your battery, which already exists. We can also provide you with the right battery type. So this is all possible. And uh, not only do we uh, supply every battery technology, we also can supply every battery voltage range. So it's really an, um, uh, quite a um, huge range of applications you can uh, use our system in. So yeah, you, you just mentioned the, the wide output range. The output range is 15 to 60 volts for the three kilowatt system, basically continuously between 15 and 60, you can program it. And for the 12 kilowatt system, Andreas, maybe rapidly, what is the output voltage? So the output voltage of the first version, which we are now bringing to the market, is 48 volt. As this is um, the right voltage probably at the moment to fit the charger to like this battery environment. The next step will be 80 volt solution. And then um, well, voltage on a vehicle is always a, a great topic for us because as we don't have any contacts, so we're really looking forward to having mobile systems at even higher voltage rates. So that would be then a very good sweet spot for our solutions. OK, thank you so much for this. The next question we got from Pear, um, what is the distance range between transmitter and receiver tolerance in misalignment? Um, yeah, Pear, perfect question. Of course, the, the tolerance is, is important for your navigation. So Andreas, I guess. yeah. Thanks. Um, so uh, talking, um, starting at the three kilowatt system, which has now been on the market for two years, um, we have a, a displacement, lateral displacement of 30 millimeters, which in which in within this area, we can transmit full power. And then uh, vertically, we give you like 
15 to 40 millimeters of displacement opportunity. This is all um, meaning in this displacement positions, in these positions, we can deliver maximum power. And uh, for the 12 kilowatt system, which is addressing bigger vehicles, we um, thought, okay, it would be interesting to have even more um, positioning tolerance. So there we are up to 70 millimeters, as Johannes uh, said early on. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Oh, it wasn't me. <laughs> it's live. <laughs> so the next question um, was um, from Jeremia. How many charging pads can one wall box support? That's an easy one. I'm going to take that one. Mm -hmm. So each wall box is connected to one charging pad. It's like a one-to-one -one relationship, which doesn't mean that each system or each wall box uh, needs to charge the same AGV or the same vehicle. You can drive with several different AGVs on the same charging pad but each charging pad is connected to one wall box, yeah? Okay, so the next question, um, how does the battery management system communicate with the receiver? Florian. Yeah, I think I can answer this. So um, yeah, charging lithium batteries, it's really crucial to communicate with the batteries to know really the, the current state and give the battery what it needs at any point. So we realized this uh, via a CAN communication bus. Uh, we have our own proprietary protocols, but also we can adapt quite easily and quite fast to every vendor out there. So uh, this is the case for if you want to charge lithium batteries, if you want to go for uh, lead acid batteries, you can do that. You can do that without communication by just um, using a small uh, software tool and basically param might put the parameters for the charging into our system and go. Yes, yeah, so what you, um, just in, in other words, we have a static and a live mode. So in the static mode, you don't use communication and in the live mode, you use communication with the battery management system. Next question is from Robert. What about your energy loss or efficiency in the transmitter and receiver part? So Overall, we claim or we, 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 we state to have an efficiency of greater 92, 93% from AC grid to DC um, output in the battery. But how do those efficiencies split in the different components? Yep. Uh, I can try to answer this. So like if you first view at the system, you would guess that a, a big part of the losses really is like in the, in the transmitting part. But uh, that's actually not the case. So um, in the lab, we uh, could reach efficiencies just for the air part uh, of over 99.5%. This is not what we have in the product uh, because we have some uh, limits regarding cost and so on. But really, the uh, the part between the two coils or the two the coil system approximately have a um, um, efficiency of about uh, roughly 99, 98, 99% also depending on the um, on your operation point. Okay, but for the, our customers, the figure which they which which is best to basically work with is basically greater 90, 92% yeah. overall efficiency. This is the figure you can also use when you compare the charger to other chargers, and we are convinced that we are basically uh, excellently competitive. Yeah. with cable bulb chargers. Right, so that, that's really the beauty. So you don't have any additional uh, sorts of losses or uh, extra losses compared to cable charging. Okay, next question is from Alexander. How long does it take until the charger starts? Will the system immediately deliver full power? So I'm gonna answer this question very rapidly because it's a very rapid process. One second until full power. And of course, this makes it a really good product for stop and go application, for example, in uh, automotive, automotive stop and go assembly processes. And um, yeah, you can remember one second until full power. Next question. Can several charging stations be used without further add-ons? Add add yeah. Or does the particular vehicle always belong to a specific charging station? Yeah. No, that's uh, that's what I mentioned before. So any ch vehicle, any AGV can drive to any charging station. And this makes it uh, especially attractive for larger fleets, larger operators, because you can, in the end, reduce your infrastructure investment and uh, um, basically simply the numbers of charging points, because you can use each charging point with every vehicle. Yeah. So, so in the in best case, 
uh, actually if you have a, a warehouse uh, running half of the equipment with 24 volts and the other half uh, with 48 volts uh, you basically need if you go for cabled in the in the worst case uh, double of the infrastructure yeah. and maybe just to to come really quickly back to the system design when Froyan showed the mobile components um, the mobile call is connected to the mobile electronic and the mobile electronic is really the brain of the system so this tells once you arrive at a charging station the mobile part will tell the station what to deliver so this then enables you to have different voltages and everything just with one station another question from uh, Alexander can your system also be used in cold chain application? What is your operation temperature range? Andreas? So in, in general, we say that would be a great application for us. Um, looking at the system design right now, we're starting at above zero degrees is the temperature range which we have specified. And the reason for that is basically cost at the first attempt. So um, if you look at charging solutions operating in cold store, those are often very specialized applications. And um, so it's generally much more easier with our uh, solution than with a charging um, uh, with cable based or contact based. But right now the product has not been designed for this application, specially designed. Okay, so <clears throat> one thing maybe we can add to this question is uh, um, the major limiting factor actually for the temperature application is also the battery. Um, the electronics uh, can be packaged and housed uh, even further, but the battery chemistry itself is also a decisive um, factor for this. And uh, maybe you saw in our presentation that we also carry LTO batteries in our product portfolio. And LTO batteries are very, very well suited for this kind of cold uh, environment application. So if you have a specific application in this direction, of course, uh, do not hesitate to, to uh, contact us. Next question is from Abdul. What about the use of energy when there is no charging? So I assume this is meaning the standby, the idling um, consumption. Uh, Florian, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I understand the question in a way. What is basically happening if there's no vehicle over the charging? Yeah, right? that's the idling yeah. consumption. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what, what's happening then is this, that uh, the basically the transmitter coil will be totally off. So there will be no uh, energy dissipating in the air. And we will have like a, a base uh, power we need of, I would say, I, I have to guess here, but I would say it's just a one to three watts. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically keeping the computer running. There's, as in any charging system, there's some electronics which are always on, but it's not the power transfer system. This is turned off when there is no vehicle. Next question is from Adi Putra. How does the customer usually implement the solution? Is it more a stationary charging spot or as an intermittent charging station where the vehicle would be intermittently charged for minutes at a time? Um, what are other gains from using the, the wireless? So basically, both solutions are possible. The, the, the major advantage of our solution is, of course, that the, the fast ramp up time in terms of uh, charging power. So you can use it in process. You can install it, as you've seen in the video before, you can, you, you can install it at some, uh, let's say, process intrinsic stop points where your vehicle would stop um, anyway. And this allows you to use this stop time for a rapid, uh, basically, charge boost. The other option, of course, is to install it in some, some kind of stationary uh, charging spots outside of your process where the vehicles would park over uh, during free time or even during long time. A vehicle can, can, can stand on the, on the charger for forever if it wants. Mm -hmm. Uh, once the charging process is, is done, um, the system is self-regulating and it, it will simply stop. Yeah? But of course, our system brings out its most benefits uh, for the in-process charging. Yeah. I'd like to add uh, something here uh, just regarding the benefit of the customer, the end user. So the benefit is really that you can uh, secure, uh, reduce the number of vehicles because you don't need additional charging time basically you can make the same job if you go for this we call it in process charging uh, if you had 10 vehicles before you can now do the job with uh, let's say seven of them and you just uh, um, have less investment to to get same results and your battery is smaller you can yeah. come up with a smaller battery which also reduces the initial cost 
Okay, thanks guys. Next question is from Jeremia. Can your system track the life of individual batteries? So I would say yes, yes. because the uh, individual batteries have a battery management system which is able to more or less broadcast its state of health, the SOH. But Florian, you're also yeah. about um, the, the data management system. Yes, right. So this is one of the, the core ideas also of our uh, fleet energy management system, the ETA hub. So what the ETA hub does is really get all the relevant data out of your fleet coming from the charges, coming from the battery and use them in the best possible way. And so you will know with applying this uh, system when you have to replace your, your batteries, if they are optimal size and you can really learn from your, your processes and we can provide to you with this uh, energy uh, ETA hub solution uh, services like like uh, predictive maintenance uh, and other <coughs> services. So we really want to get all the information we can get out of the processes and use them for the benefit of our partners and customers. Okay, the next question. Can I only use the system for new vehicles or can all the vehicles also be retrofitted to enable them to charge wirelessly using the new technology? This is a clear yes, our system can be used for retrofit um, if you have the, the right packaging space, if you have the right uh, voltage range, the right batteries, you can use our system with an old and existing HV and existing battery. And of course, you can also use it uh, for design in uh, new developments. So the next question would be from Alexander again. Is it not dangerous to charge lithium batteries so fast and with that much power? Who want to take that one? I can take it. You can take it. Yeah. So um, concerning lithium uh, batteries, um, this is really a technology <coughs> which brings, uh, in general, industrial mobility to the next level. So um, this is basically the way it will go. Um, the related risk with lithium uh, batteries is really a topic uh, we we are uh, we have in discussions with with many of our customers so to be uh, to have a risk free lithium uh, solution you really need to take care and you shouldn't do quick decisions so it's really important that you choose the right chemistry for your process so looking at uh, HEV 24/7 applications we really recommend to go for high cycle life technologies and in this we so we see uh, lithium isophosphate as a really uh, we we consider it the, the core technology for HEV applications uh, if you have really really high demands you should go for LTO uh, we often see also NMC based systems in the field and if you look at M NMC that's a lithium technology which has been developed for automotive application and uh, like automotive application is really a different story than uh, auto automated solutions in the industry. It's like comparing a regular car to a, a truck and the car needs to drive over its lifetime, let's say 100, 200,000 uh, Ks, the truck needs to go over a million. So you can just cannot use automotive crate or you shouldn't <coughs> use automotive crate cells for your 24 seven application. If so, you do so, you can do that, but you need to be really careful uh, how to size it and so on. Otherwise you will end up with the risk. Thanks for this. We got to come to our last question. We are running out of time, unfortunately. Uh, the last cast question is from Jeremy. If your HV lands outside of the misalignment tolerance, will it still charge? Andreas. <laughs> Well, there's a, uh, so the, the misalignment tolerance, there's a first step. So that what then will happen is, um, well, communication will still be on. So uh, we're still talking and we, we're trying to find out uh, if the charging position can be met still. So the first step would be we reduce the power. And then if you go even further away, we will stop transmitting power. But this is an area which is really huge if you're in the HV world. So uh, like talking about 30, 40 centi uh, millimeters, that's really a lot. So the typical spec of an HV navigation is plus minus 10 mm. So we think and we have experienced that we are easily in this range with a good HV. This was the last question. 
Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you so much for the great interest. Uh, we are really overwhelmed by the numbers of participants and by the interest. We will answer the questions which you've uh, posted and we, we were not able to discuss here uh, via email afterwards. So don't be afraid. You will get the answers you've, uh, you requested. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Florian. Thank you, thank you Julian, thank you from the marketing for all the organization. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.